Uh, my name is Laura McDonald. Um, I lead all of our sports science initiatives here at SU Breakthrough. One of my first tasks when I was hired at SU Breakthrough about three years ago was to uh, put together a uh, semblance of an assessment. So at the time, assessments were very popular. Everybody was kind of on board with, you know, understanding that they needed to uh, evaluate their athletes before going into any sense of, you know, programming or training. But you know, there was a a, a wealth of different options out there. And I think like any other training facility, we sort of just, uh, you know, picked and choose of what we thought uh, would work for us and just kind of put it into play. So our first iteration of our assessment was um, a lot different than what our assessment looks like right now. It's definitely grown and evolved. August of 2019, that first training year, we really, you know, focused a lot on just mobility. And I think very quickly, through feedback from our coaches, we learned that like mobility is really only part of the equation. It's, a, it's an important part, but it's really only part of the athlete's full story. And so as we started to really dig into what more information did our coaches need, we kind of came across this idea of like, we gotta understand what the athlete's capacity is. We need to understand what they bring to the table with them before they even really step into their skill. And so that led us to really thinking about what are sort of the fundamental you know, tasks, not necessarily movements, but tasks that every single one of our softball athletes have to accomplish. And so that led us down some paths of thinking of things like trunk control and trunk stability, um, understanding force transfer, so being able to put energy into the ground, uh, you know, jumping, being in the air, how are you landing and absorbing those forces. And then we kind of just took that uh, base and worked our way back into a selection of exercises that gave us an understanding of where does the athlete break down? Are they breaking down on the ground? Are they breaking down in the air? And then we can start to answer that question as really as to why are they breaking down? That first version of our assessment was, uh, it was pretty intense. It had a number of exercises in there. Um, it did not at the time include any power assessment, which we know now is a really important piece of our puzzle. Um, so we took that assessment on the road to a couple colleges and we implemented it in-house. And I think we learned really quickly that uh, that was a good start, but it was not something that was probably going to persist. Um, we really needed to scale back some things, uh, mostly because it was just too long. Fatigue was starting to get to be an issue, and we really realized that you know, there needed to be um, really more attention paid to the efficiency of the assessment. So those first early lessons were too many exercises for sure. Um, and also we realized that you know, applying an assessment, especially at the level of detail that we were utilizing, mobility, movement capacity, health history review, biomechanics, you know, ball flight data, that really applying that to, to prepubescent athletes was kind of silly uh, because there were so many other things they really needed to focus on that an assessment would have told us anyway. So it was really at that point, kind of in that fall of 2019, that we said, you know, okay, we really need to just focus this assessment on post-pubescent athletes. Um, and that really helped us to kind of clarify then the exercises that we were including and some of the movements we were including and what our process really looked like. So that was kind of our first implementation of you know, this kind of system where we applied all these assessments to all these athletes, you know, learned some information, you know, took some critical feedback, and then really went back to the drawing board. Uh, and then I think obviously for, you know, for the majority of people in this world, 2020 was kind of a mess. Um, but it did give us an opportunity to really think about the, the lessons we learned from those iterations of our assessment. We had you know, probably 100 athletes through that original assessment. And we went back to the drawing board a little bit. So we, we kind of looked at you know, what worked, what didn't work, what matches what we're seeing on the strength floor, what holes does our assessment still have that uh, is not answering something for our coaches. So we took the opportunity as we you know, all had to kind of step away from being together in the spring of 20 uh, to think about our assessment and to think like, okay, what is our next version we want to implement? And then we come back to our new training year in August 2020. What does that look like? And that version really just, like I said, eliminated a lot of exercises. It, we added the power element to it, so using some med ball throws and vertical jumps and sprint times. That's really been the, the core of the assessment that we have even to this day. Um, so through 20, uh, 2020, 2021, it's really been um, you know, focusing on the trunk control component for sure. So we look at uh, things like how do they move in multiple planes of motion, for example, a lateral squat, which both has sagittal and frontal plane components. We want to test into your core. We still have jumps in there. But what our assessment really still does for us is tell us essentially where does the athlete break down. The power element was a really important piece to add because it, it let us 
understand how does an athlete express her mobility and what we call movement capacity. You know, like I said, mobility is a piece of the puzzle, but adding the movement capacity component made it very clear uh, to Carly, our strength coach, and to our skill coaches of, you know, where do I basically pick up? Where does the athlete leave off in her assessment? Where do I pick up as the, as the strength coach or as the skill coach? Um, and you know, what am I trying to essentially uh, you know, help her to bring to her softball skills? Uh, you know, so for Carly's perspective, from a strength perspective, she's trying to make sure that they are bringing everything they can to their skill session, whether that's pitching, hitting, or overhand throwing. Um, and so our assessment has gone through a couple of different iterations. We're still even trying to refine that process. Uh, the, the revisions are a lot mi more minor now, and obviously not as uh, intense as the first overhaul we had. We feel pretty good about it where it's at right now. But the, um, the most important thing is that it tells a story. It provides a baseline for all of our athletes. Um, it's been easier to put into a full system for our athletes, so it's not just the initial assessment. It's reassessing, it is tracking that data. Um, it is a process that is really underpins a lot of what we do at S2 Breakthrough because it's the heart of all of our programming. It's how we know how to individualize a program for an athlete. It's how we track her progress uh, to make sure that, you know, her commitment to training, to make sure that our commitment to the programming, that those are meeting in the middle and they're meeting her needs. If her assessment and reassessment is, is not progressing, then we got to go back and figure out why. So it's given us a, a great opportunity to really track athlete progress, to show them progress, even if if maybe the performance metrics aren't quite coming along yet, she still can make some gains in, in improving her mobility, improving movement capacity, improving power. And so that just becomes an, a great point for her to really understand her development. I think one of the most important pieces of our assessment and one of the most important reasons for an assessment is that it opens a conversation for athletes to start to understand their own story. Uh, something we run into all the time is, you know, an athlete will sit down with us for her initial assessment. They maybe have found us through social media or the internet or a friend of a friend. Um, and what they're really searching for is an understanding either to, uh, you know, playing pain-free, improving their performance, recruiting, whatever her whys are. The root of that starts with the assessment because the assessment allows us to tell her story back to her. Um, so if you, know, if, if you are a parent of an athlete, you're an athlete yourself, or you're a coach who just wants to understand you know, how to legitimately improve your athletes, the assessment is the place to start. Um, there are lots of versions out there. Obviously, we feel really strongly that ours is a pretty good one for softball, but um, you know, the assessment's the place to start. It's how you learn the athlete's story. It's how you learn you know, what she brings to the table from a skill perspective so you know what your expectations are. And then it really makes the link to strength and conditioning so clear. You know, athletes uh, do a lot of playing. Early sport specialization, we know, is uh, pretty common for young athletes. And, you know, the strength and conditioning area is the way to kind of bridge that gap and, and helping her to develop her skill. Um, but that assessment tells the story and, and it really starts the athlete's journey into, you know, owning who she is as a player.